This painting is called We Shall Not Return, which is mostly in watercolour, but also saturated with acrylics. And it was produced back in the studio here after coming back from Jordan and travelling through the desert there and visiting the dry oases, which were the places I'd gone to with environmentalists and ecologists to see how the, the desert and the ecology there had changed. Doing research back in the studio, I was pulling together my sketches and researching stories about the, the marshes and the oases in Jordan and in Syria. And um, I struck upon the bald ibis, which are the subject of the painting in here. But um, they used to be really common in Europe. They're a migratory bird that uh, flew from central southern Europe across to Africa and back every year. But because, as, because of ecological change and hunting pressure and draining of the swamps, the bird became extinct as a migrating bird. And there was just a tiny relict population left in Morocco where they could be conserved because they, they stayed put. So instead of trying to conserve them across the entire migratory range, there was one place where they could be watched and looked after by what were effectively armed guards. And then miraculously, about five years ago, three bald ibis were discovered in Turkey. And over the course of the next few months, they were found to be migrating through Syria towards Africa and were thought to um, end up in Ethiopia or somewhere. And the, the world's um, ornithological um, and conservation bodies focused all their effort onto this tiny population of three birds. And there was a conference in Aleppo about five years ago with everybody getting together and trying to work out how these birds could be saved. And then Syria just descended into war. And over the course of the next few months, uh, the birds disappeared on migration somewhere in Syria. When I first got the bit of paper to prepare it for painting, um, I was playing around with different ideas and trying to make uh, work that looked very different from what I'd done before. So I saturated the, the entire piece of paper with um, a kind of glistening gold acrylic paint, just a very light wash. And the result is that the, the paint surface shimmers with these kind of gold fragments. And that shows through the, the painting, which has been done on top of it subsequently. I also wanted to break up the, the compositional surface of the painting and also to locate it in sort of a feel of it being Middle Eastern somehow. And to do that, I, I got some stencils and, uh, and used them to, to create patterns within the painting right at the beginning and then at the end as well, working over the top with uh, lighter gouache colours that were opaque and obliterated some of the painting that I'd done before. And what I'm wanting to do in the picture is to, to make it uh, sort of real but also surreal and slightly uncomfortable. So there are depictions of the birds at the wrong scale as being tied on to the, the larger images of the birds. And there's um, this theme of water as well. And the, um, the narrative of these oases being uh, run dry and polluted, which has happened in both Syria and in Jordan and the ecological damage that that has caused and that exacerbates uh, problems for humans and for the animals that live there. What was really useful about visiting different places and feeling what a place felt like, the, the, the kind of um, the colours of the place, was that that fed into the work that I produced. So particularly in the, the desert in Jordan, the paintings that I, I created were, were saturated with um, sandy colours and muted dun and beige and greys. But also um, visiting towns and um, looking at the architecture in these places, which are culturally and visually very different, that fed into a lot of the work that I was producing. And um, a, quite a different sensibility of colours as well, of blues and dark reds and the kind of cultural importance of, uh, of greens and blues and how that um, fed into the whole narrative of what I was painting as well. Green, green has a huge importance in a desert culture and blue as well, so blue is water. Green is you know, what is produced where, where there is, is water. And um, there's also 
uh, kind of the whole culture is uh, fired up by kind of its own folklore and its own religious connotations as well. So there is um, uh, there is a, a, a kind of Muslim prophecy that the the deserts in Jordan and Syria will turn green at some point. And of course, what we're seeing is exactly the opposite of that.